Hello students. So once again welcome back to the chapter solid state. In the last class of the chapter we were talking about the classification of the solids in which we classified the solids into two major categories that is crystalline solids and amorphous solids. The basic difference we we talked about the differences between these two but the basic difference between a crystalline solid and amorphous solid is simply long range order of the particles in the crystalline solids and short range order in the amorphous solids that's basic difference and we we saw that that in crystalline solids since th there is a long range order hence these solids are more stable and comparatively amorphous solids are unstable and that's the reason that the solids that's basically the 100 elements which are in solid state in their elemental state they tend to form crystalline nature correct we are talking about elements they tend to form crystalline nature so it becomes very very important to understand that crystalline solids are a very important part of our life and hence in today's chapter we are going to do the classification of crystalline solids so let's begin with the topic for today that is crystalline solids classification by our host manjot singh let's go ahead and see how this crystalline solids are classified crystalline solids are classified into four major categories the first category is ionic solids see the name of these classifications are going to tell you everything correct everything is there in the name so please understand this ionic solids the name itself says ionic ionic means the constituent particles the constituent particles in ionic solids are going to be ions ions two types that is cations and anions getting the point so these classifications are based on the constituent particles and the forces present in them so i will list down an another point over here that is the forces since there is cation and anion and two opposite charges so there is electrostatic force of attraction between the particles in ionic solids similarly when we move on to the second category it says molecular solids now molecular solids means it's there in the name molecular solids molecular solid means that it constitutes of molecules yes the solids in which the constituent particles are actually molecules for example liquid nitrogen when it is solidified then we call that as molecular solid for example O2 when we solidify this gas it's called a molecular solid so this is how molecular solids are named as similarly you have a molecule like HCl so when this HCl liquid is solidified that is known as molecular solid perfectly okay similarly if you want to take examples of ionic solids examples of ionic solids can be NaCl MgCl2 these all are ionic solids very very important and since there is the constituent particles are molecules in molecular solids hence the forces will also be the molecular forces and we particularly remember we particularly remember that molecular forces are nothing but van der waals forces right van der waals forces so what are ionic solids ionic solids are those solids in which the constituent particles are constituent particles are ions what are molecular solids molecular solids are those solids in which the constituent particles are molecules and and the force between that molecules is van der waals force of attraction then we move ahead to third category and that third category is very very important so please understand that 
third category is covalent solids now covalent solids are those solids in which basically the constituent particles are atoms yes very very important see understand there there is no covalent force between molecules there is a covalent force always between atoms do atoms hi hain jo electron sharing karte hain do molecules kabhi electron sharing nahi karte hain so this becomes very very important to understand that covalent and molecular solids mein there is a small difference that over here there are molecules and over here there are atoms atoms in which there is covalent force covalent force ka matlab samajh mein aata hai na covalent force matlab sharing of electron ka force hai perfectly okay so this is basically covalent solids let's take some example over here example like diamond in which carbon is bonded with carbon with a covalent force example is silica in which si and o have covalent forces between them and there is a network network of this following there is a regular long range order in these solids right so you have to understand this covalent force and molecular solids covalent solids and molecular solids there is a thin line difference in covalent solids there are atoms as constituent particles and in molecular solids there are molecules as constituent particles very very important then moving on to the last category that is metallic solids now once again metallic solids metallic solids means which constitutes of metal ions correct and delocalized electrons how does how does these metallic solids look at microscopic level this is how they look now this is very important to understand see this this is a microscopic level of a metallic solid in which basically these positive ions they are the metallic ions and these moving particles over here they are delocalized electrons or free electrons correct and the force of attraction between these electrons and the metal cations these force of attraction keeps them strong is that clear so basically that's the reason that ionic solids and metallic solids they look quite similar over here also we have positive and negative as constituent particles and metallic solids also we have positive and negative wherein positive are all metal ions and negative are electrons hence the force of attraction between ionic and metallic solids is electrostatic force of attraction only but in metallic solids we call that electrostatic force of attraction as metallic force basically because metallic force is little weaker than electrostatic force that is present in ionic solids so this becomes very very important classification so try and understand this classification because based on this there are lots of questions been asked in previous board years now before we go ahead and differentiate between these four solids four crystalline solids based on different properties we need to understand that we just told that molecular solids they constitutes of molecules and molecules ke beech mein the force of attraction is van der waals force of attraction aur van der waals force of attraction humne char tarike ka dekha tha dipole dipole iron dipole iron induced dipole so basically iron aur dipole ki agar main baat karu to iron to cation ya anion hota hai so basically this is an atom and molecular force similarly if you talk about iron and induced dipole force chapter number 5 class 11th states of matter mein hum ye forces padhte hain to basically ye jo do forces hain ye do forces ek atom aur ek molecule ke beech mein hain so hence 
these two types of forces cannot be present in molecular solids so left are dipole dipole force second is dipole induced dipole force and third is basically instantaneous dipole and induced dipole correct so this becomes very very important to understand that based on these three forces your molecular solids will also be classified into three categories and what are those three categories the first type is known as non polar molecular solids in which a non polar molecule and a non polar molecule gets attracted due to instantaneous dipole and induced dipole force to name a few let's take example of o2 let's take example of solid i2 solid n2 so all these are non polar molecules similarly h2 non polar molecules so when they are solidified they have instantaneous dipole induced dipole force between them and hence they are known as non polar molecular solids and this this instantaneous dipole and induced dipole force is also known as london dispersion force which is one of the weakest forces and that's the reason that these solids over here they are temporarily made is that perfectly okay correct they don't stay in their solid state for long then coming up second is polar solids already you might have guessed it polar solids polar solids are those solids in which dipole attracts the other dipole correct simple examples we have seen where like hcl is an example where like hbr is an example when we solidify these liquids they are under molecular solids and under those molecular solids they fall under polar category because they have permanent dipoles in them correct and then we had a very special kind of force under dipole dipole force that was known as hydrogen bonding and that hydrogen bonding leads to hydrogen bonded molecular solids but this hydrogen bonding is only possible when hydrogen is connected either to oxygen either to fluorine or to nitrogen <clears throat> so this you have to understand and make it a point that molecular solids are divided into three more categories non polar polar hydrogen bonded in which hydrogen bonded is the strongest force and hence hydrogen bonded molecular solids are the strongest among these three that is non polar polar and hydrogen bonded but if we talk about the crystalline solids classification then among this the strongest force of attraction lies in ionic solids then the second strongest force lies in covalent solids the third strongest force lies in metallic solids and then at the last comes molecular solids so this is the order of strength of force of attraction between the constituent particles so in your examinations what they are going to ask they are going to simply ask what is the difference between ionic and metallic solids or what is the difference between molecular and covalent solids differentiate giving examples these are the types of questions which might be asked from this area of the chapter so hence it becomes very important to understand that how these solids are differentiated from each other to do so i have brought a very interesting table and that is nothing but this so you see i have ionic molecular covalent and metallic and see on what basis i have classified or i have differentiated them unit particles binding forces properties and then few examples and this is how you have to answer in your examination so this table over here becomes once again very very important so ionic solids positive and negative ions already told that is cations and anions binding forces are ionic bonds since 
they are ionic bonds ionic bonds that is nothing but electrostatic force of attraction which is the strongest force of attraction hence they are very hard and brittle they have very high melting point high heaps of fusion very poor thermal and electrical conductivity so you see the properties become very very important i have given you example nacl mgcl2 zns all these are basically your ionic solids talk about molecular solid you have polar or non polar molecules or we have another category that is hydrogen bonded where the forces of attractions i already told you van der waals forces of attraction which are london dispersion dipole dipole and hydrogen bonds now since there the van der waals forces are not that strong forces of attraction so these solids are fairly soft they have low to moderately high melting points low will be for non polar molecules moderate will be for polar molecules and high will be for hydrogen bonded molecules all the three has been covered in the same table don't want to load you with lots of information so hence just concentrate on this table it go, it's going to be very very simple the examples for that basically dry ice methane these all are molecular solids covalent solids atoms are the constituent particles covalent bonds are basically binding forces and since covalent bonds are second strongest force of attraction they are very hard very high melting point poor thermal and electrical conductivity the examples over here are diamond quartz silicon etc now understand this what i'm trying to tell you over here covalent solids are hard high melting point and poor thermal and electrical conductivity but but remember there is an exception over here please note this point in your notebooks while you are seeing this lecture an exception over here is graphite graphite is very soft it's a covalent solid but it is soft it has very high thermal and electrical conductivity due to the structure that we did in class 11th s block elements so it is very very important to understand this wherever there is exception make it a point the question to be asked is high probability so covalent solids are hard made high melting point poor thermal and electrical conductivity but it the examiner might ask you a question that why graphite being a covalent solid is not having these properties it is just simply because of the structure of graphite perfect so please remember this exception metallic solids i already told you cations in electron cloud yes this is very very important delocalized electron that means they, there is c of electrons right and that is why that model is known as electron c model that we saw in the previous slide metallic bonds are the forces of attraction and metallic bonds are fairly you know st strong or we can go from range to weak to strong so there are few metals which are very hard there are few metals which are very soft there are few metals which have very high melting point like tungsten 3000 degree celsius approximately and we have metals like zinc we ha which have melting point very fairly low that is approximately 460 degree celsius so this is very very important and the examples over here will be all your metals around you that is copper iron zinc etc so in this lecture we have understood a very very important part of the chapter that is classification of crystalline solids and why are we doing crystalline solids classification the reason over here is that out of the 100 elements which are in solid state we know that most of them are under crystalline category and that's the reason we are going to concentrate the further chapter study on the crystalline solid part and in the next lecture when we come we are going to move to the microscopic level and understand the structures of solids and how the constituent particles are packed inside these structures so wait for my next lecture to come we will meet once again till then please take care of yourself bye bye have a nice day